how does it feel when to stand on the very stones that ran with your parents' blood? Do you feel sad? Full of rage? Or does that outfit help bury your feelings? Hiding your true self. You become what you've always fought against. And I will stop you. I have powerful friends, Batman. This is just the beginning. Why do you work alone, Batman? I believe you enjoy the loneliness. I assume that you thought yourself untouchable. Looks like Batman himself is exiting the building. Mayday! Well, as you can see, no one is untouchable. We are the future of Arkham! We are the future of Gotham! If you solve the room ahead, you save them. If you don't, then they die. You must show you are willing to take a life. Stop me. Soon I will command forces beyond your comprehension. Are you gonna be a good boy and give up nicely? Steady, we're just huge fans of Batman, so getting this opportunity to work on this game was phenomenal. We, you know, I, I've always said it's such a privilege to get to work on Batman, so those are all our, our dual goals always just to make a game that's really authentic, but something that's also really fun, and that's definitely something that we've tried to follow through to our team. And how, when you're coming off a game that's that acclaimed, that successful, I mean, you've heard the audience, they love it. In your head, are you are you are you intentionally trying to say like we have to top that now? Is that is that what the attitude you're going with, or is it something else? Yeah, I think at the end of uh, Arkham Asylum, it was definitely one of the things what Ian managed to do at that point, and so that's the next thing that you work on next. That's it. So uh, you know, you can be. It is quite overwhelming, you know, like. You know, it's thanks to you guys and the response we got from you guys, it, it is quite daunting and scary. <laughs> yeah. um, like, you know, but I think at the same time it really inspires us because when we're working like in a bunker for two years, you know, it's yeah, it really inspires us to do like you know, for the last nine months especially, it's been pretty crazy. We've been working weekends till one in the morning every day. And I think when we look at that and see that anticipation, it's something that definitely keeps us going. Mars, but we go into this little bubble and then 
two years later, that happens. Throughout that, we can feel that kind of wave of expectation. And all we want to feel about is how we make the narrative authentic, that will be to the Paper. That's about the game. How big is the game world? What are the takedowns? How many new gadgets? From a stack perspective, what are we looking at here? I mean, I think we, we sort of thought, what is, how do we make the best Batman game we could? So our kind of initial thing wasn't just to make it bigger. That will really come from the fact that we just wanted to take Batman into Gotham City. You know, that was what got us really excited. I mean, in terms of stats, I would say the game world is probably about five times the size of Arkham Island. Um, the play time to take down all the super villains is over 30 hours. Uh, well over <laughs> really been something that we've been really passionate about. You know, we've doubled that man's moves, doubled the number of animations. Um, doubled the amount of dialogue. Doubled the amount of dialogue. <laughs> I'm surprised he can still speak. Jedi. <laughs> Did you double the size of the team? Uh, we didn't actually, I mean, we started Arkham Asylum with just under 40 people and finished it with just under 60 people which is kind of relatively small for the size title it was. Uh, at the moment, we, so we went from about 60 to just under 100, which again isn't that big, but I think that's the way we prefer it because for us it is a real kind of labor of love, it is a real passion. A passion. So we want to kind of keep it small enough that everyone can share that passion. Well, I, I think the massive team up at uh, Ubisoft Montreal needs to talk to you guys about how you're able to do all of this with just 100 people. Um, <laughs> I love Assassin's Creed, but we're not here to talk about that. <laughs> now, talk about, you talked about taking Batman out of Arkham and into the streets of Gotham. Um, is it accurate to say that sort of the genre change, like, I mean, this is an open world game now. How do you go from making an acclaimed action adventure game to now taking on one of the most daunting genres out there next to MMOs? We kind of approached it with the same attitude, really, that we just wanted to make something that was felt really handcrafted. Like, I think a number of open world games, as they expand into open world, tend to lose that detail and you kind of have a lot of sacrifices. And we sort of said up front that we don't want to do that. We want a game with all the care and attention of Arkham Asylum, um, but on just on a, in a, kind of on a bigger campus. So I think that was the main drive for us, was how do we take Batman into Gotham but show that whole area that you can go to, you know, fulfill that dream of gliding through the streets, diving and gliding down the back alleyways, and having all of these super villains in there and the way they bounce off of each other and the threats that Batman has to deal with. That was all what we really wanted to do. So we didn't really look at it as in terms of taking on open world games as much as just this game has to feel like Batman in Gotham City. That was that was our goal and that was I think you know, hopefully what we could be narrative led and that narrative demanded us it's all about the narrative, it's all about the story. It just sounds like you've got this big wrong objective. Um, Claudio, as a fan of the game, you obviously love the first one. You're excited for the second one. Uh, is that what you wanted to see out of it when you finished up Arkham Asylum? When you beat the game, got 100%, got all that last achievement or trophy, whichever system you played it on. Um, what were you wanting to see them do the next time around? Um, for me, I think I wanted to see the calendar. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I was so thrilled with the game that I just kind of wanted, I wanted more. You know, and I was hoping that, that, that you guys would, you know, do a follow-up. I mean, in terms of like the details of video games and things like that, I mean, I just, I like to play the campaigns. I like to go through the story, you know. I, um, I'm, you know, as a comic book writer, I mean, that's the most important thing, I think, is a, is, is a strong story. And, and, and Arkham Asylum had that, and just wanted a kind of a follow-up to it. And I'm really, I, I'm very excited and, and, and to, to play the next one, for sure. I mean, when the opportunity came to be a part of the soundtrack, I mean, it was something that, for me, as a fan of the character, I mean, I jumped. I mean, I was telling you guys yesterday in the morning, I mean, it took me a, a, a day and a half to create the song. I was so enthused, 
you know, so, um, so yeah, I'm sorry, we're going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all fanboys a little bit up here. Um, now, the story doesn't write itself, you know, renowned Batman writer Paul Denny yeah. scripted. Yeah. scripted the intricate storylines within the game, and unfortunately he couldn't make the trip to New York. What's the process for writing a game like Arkham City? Uh, I mean, we had, uh, at the start of the game, we basically sat down, all the way over to come to the studios, and we basically sat down and kicked around different ideas of what we want to do, where we wanted the story to go. We had an idea, as you would have seen, from the sort of uh, clues that we left in Arkham Asylum, of, where the story was going to lead, and the fact that uh, uh, Princey Shark was running for mayor, and I think there was a secret office that had these plans in for Arkham City. And, but, so we kind of had a broad outline for where we wanted to go. We kind of knew the main story beats, and then uh, Paul came over and we worked out all the main details. And also, some guys from uh, DC as well, who, you know, I've got to say, have been phenomenal with us. They give us a ton of support, and, you know, you, you hear sometimes that working on nice games is difficult. But working with those guys, honestly, it's brilliant. Um, you know, they always come to us with ideas, but, and, and it's been, you know, really between us, between DC, between Paul Dini, you know, throwing ideas around for the story and getting all of the characters in we want to get, and just tell a great Batman story. That's kind of where we always start. Kevin, what's the importance of having someone like Paul involved in this game? Yes, sir. <laughs> And he was one of the original uh, inspiration creating the show. So his involvement in this game was, was fundamental in terms of, I, see, I think one of the most important things about Batman is the relationship between the audience and the story. There is an incredible degree of loyalty um, from the audience. You understand Batman better than I do. I found often when I hear from people. And I think there's a connection between the audience and, and Paul. Um, you know, there are these certain people who are in the original group that there's such loyalty to um, because there's just a connection between them and the audience. And Paul is one of those people. What would you say is particular about, say, delivering lines that Paul has written versus, you don't have to name names, I won't get anyone in trouble, but <laughs> lines that they come from other writers. What's unique about what he, what he brings to the table? What Paul understands about Batman is everything about Batman comes from those very deep wounds that he went through um, as a child. And I think that's why the audience relates to Batman so well. Everybody's got a, a public face and a private face. We all, everybody. And in Batman, it's manifest. He's the embodiment. He takes that to a whole different level. And the private face is that wounded kid who lost his parents and is taking on the world to avenge them and to correct those, those mistakes. Paul goes to that place with every story. He goes to that, that basic truth of the, of the uh, myth. 